friends, Jerry Rosie here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Got something in today. Don't even know what it is yet. It's in a real case. Can you see it? I'm back up here where you can see the whole case. And uh, it's heavy duty case. Except that it's good it is heavy duty because look at this. Look at this deep gouge. That's pretty deep actually. I don't know if you can see how deep that is or not. But uh, I don't know how to open this other than to take all the screws out of it. And I assume that's what that's all the screws are for here on the top. I hope there's nothing damaged inside. With that big of a dent, and you just never know. Let's just take a look at the guitar real quick. Okay, it's a Regal. It's a Regal guitar, classical style. Um, the binding, some of the binding is missing here, here, here. Um, there's not enough binding in the case to do us much good, so more than likely we'll just have to put new binding on the back and just call it a done deal and forget that other the couple little chips that are in there they you know they might fill in a little bit here I don't know maybe if maybe we'll just do some filling in or piecing in well here's there's more broke out here and here and most likely I never say absolutely on anything anymore most likely I'll just replace all the binding because it's just in very bad shape and uh, you know if you got it all patched together it doesn't look very good anyway I can see where the braces broke off on the inside back, so it, it, I'm assuming that's where that brace goes. I can also tell that the next brace back is almost completely loose and out. The front brace appears to be okay. The front two braces appear to be okay on the back. On the top, I have no idea, but I'm assuming the worst because it just don't look good. <laughs> When you have that much wood missing out of the top, this is a tough repair. I can tell you already, this is not an easy fix. But I've got an idea how I'm going to fix it. I bid these things with an email, and it's difficult to tell how much work there is from, the, from looking at them. This is definitely going to take a few hours. <laughs> and that's putting it mildly. This might be a candidate for taking it apart before we fix this one. It's got some pretty fancy binding on the top. You can see up close. Fortunately, most of that looks pretty good. I don't see anything that's completely missing out of the top binding, because if that was missing, that'd be very hard to duplicate, replicate. It's got the one crack in the back here. Uh, I don't see any damage from where that case was damaged because that was in this general area right here and I don't see any problem with that. I don't see a mark on it so I don't think the damage came all the way through. He hit, he did a good job of packing it. There, there was padding between the case and this so I think that absorbed the shock on that. Thank goodness. I will say it is kind of in line with that crack but uh, that crack in all things considered is very minimal issues so I'm not too worried about it. We definitely got our work cut out for us on this one. So stay tuned. This might be a two or three parter. Okay I'm gonna read the uh, letter that came with this uh, guitar. Uh, I'll keep it off camera because on the back of it has his name and address but um, anyway it says here is the Regal guitar that uh, we exchanged the emails. He, he says, I enclosed a copy of the emails for your information, which is not a bad idea because I do get a lot of emails. <laughs> I do not have a case for this guitar, so I built this shipping box. And, of course, he did a very nice job on that. He must be a woodworker, I'm assuming. I've left enough depth, hopefully, for the installed bridge. Please make sure that's the case. When, it, when I ship it back, it says... It says, included in the box are <laughs> Regal Guitar, badly in need of repair. I got you on that one. <laughs> I agree with that part. <laughs> it badly needs repair. 
A bridge that I believe was the original but had been re-glued by my father. That's kind of what I expected by looking at it. A wood block that was on the inside. He says, I don't think this was original, but uh, my father, uh, he thinks his father made that to support the bridge with two machine screws. And we've got all that. And he says, uh, he's fairly sure I'll know what to do with all that. And for the most part, I'm going to put that back in a plastic bag and send it back to him because for the most part, we're not going to use that stuff. Stiffener from the body back, which I'm saying would be the inside brace there. That would be this. Uh, three bridge pins and some little plastic pieces there that uh, binding that came off. Uh, he sent the rosewood block and the ebony block because he was he bought these thinking that he might attempt the repair. And then, I like what he says. He says, <laughs> I had purchased these when I was considering uh, attempting the repair myself. Then I came to my senses and decided that there are things best left to someone with the proper skills. Okay, he didn't know which block would be the best one to use. Let's says here, go ahead and keep, he says, keep the rest of the blocks and material that I don't use, just keep it. He said, don't worry about sending it back, which is nice of him. I can always use little pieces of wood like that. Okay, a six hole drill jig, which I might use that. That, that was a good, good deal there. I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna try to salvage the original bridge. Um, I just don't think, first of all, the material it's made from is very low quality. Regal guitars, you know, were kind of mass produced, kind of, they're kind of like silver tone type things and they're just, you know, I, I, I hate to say the word entry level because this one is made pretty well. Still kind of a low end type guitar, but they're kind of neat because, you know, I think fixable and this one had some pretty nice binding around the top and stuff, so it's kind of neat. But I think we will make this out of ebony, which is the block he sent, because this was dyed black. So I don't like the shape of this bridge at all. That's the shape of this bridge is one of the reasons I think that it broke, um, because it's so narrow this way. There's no, there's no, you know, uh, ability to hold anything down. Uh, to keep the, it, even if it did ha hold, it's so narrow it would cause a big belly in the top of the guitar. So, you know, I, I I'll make it a sort of look like this sort of, but I think I'm going to make it a little bit wider, and uh, hopefully I don't have to make it this tall. But I guess I will because that's really really crazy tall. I don't know if you can see how tall that is, but. That is really tall. I, you just don't see bridges that high very often. Let's just get a measurement on that. I, I'm pretty sure we're talking well over a half an inch just for the bridge. Well, no, it's not over, but it's close. It's uh, 450, and that's not including the saddle. So with the saddle, we're right at 5, 510. So we're at you know a half an inch plus 10 thousandths when you include the saddle here. So it's very tall. I mean, you just don't see them like that. They're usually in the 300 thousandths range, not the 500 thousandths range. Um, but, you know, it's kind of nice to have a tall saddle, but, you know, sometimes that's not a good thing either. I'm going to look down the guitar. Yeah, boy. That's not good. That's, that's, that's not real good, unfortunately. The, uh, the neck, I'm again, I'm exaggerating. The neck is like this. It should be like this. Uh, actually, it should be flat to like this. Uh, but it's like this. So that's not good either. So that's, that's a neck reset. I don't know. It, it's, at this end, this should just about be level with the top or slightly below the top by just eyeballing across the top. And this is at least a quarter inch higher than the top. So that's not good. You know, I, I didn't, I don't think I bargained for a neck reset in my emails, but uh, we may have to do that. I have a cheater way of doing a neck reset and we may use the cheater way of doing a neck reset because I'm pretty sure I'm going to take this one apart. I, you know, I don't always take them apart but because this binding is so bad already, I don't have to worry about messing up the edge. You know, uh, if the edge is good, brand, you know, like if it's never been taken apart, I don't like to take them apart on an old vintage instrument if I can avoid it. Um, 
but on this one it's already totally destroyed around the edge so I don't have to worry about that I can take this off put new binding on it and the way I cheat on the neck reset is and I'm saying I'm just talking this I'm not saying I'm gonna do this yet but I basically when I glue the back on I spring this neck down and I glue the back on now that might cause me to have to trim a little bit off the back you know and uh, you know that's okay because it's already messed up anyway but uh, we're we're gonna consider that because that would be the far cheaper alternative to removing all of this you know and, and you're just taking a chance on scarring this all up around here too and and scarring up this joint here but if I could take the back off, spring this thing down, spring the neck down a little bit, glue the back back on it while the neck is down, it'll stay there. That's a possibility. All right, let me finish reading the letter. I shouldn't have got off on that sidetrack. Sorry about that. Okay, the six-hole drill jig there. He goes into detail on that. Um, but that may be useful. He says, I think that covers everything. He says, call him or email him if I have any questions. He says, I do have one question. The guitar has no pick guard. You will notice some pick scars. I lean toward not installing a pick guard since it original condition. I would appreciate your advice on this. Well, I don't generally put a pick guard on something that's never had one, but we, you know, what you could do in a case like this one, especially if it's going to be played a lot from now on, would be to put a clear pick guard on it. Having watched and greatly enjoyed a number of your videos, I believe I know what to expect. The uh, estimate cost of repairs is reasonable, and I've, I, I've enclosed a check for a little bit more, it looks like, to uh, cover the cost of the repairs and the return shipping. Of course, there is no hurry or need to rush on this repair. The guitar has not been played in almost 50 years. However, I do very much look forward to making music with it. I will probably give uh, it to one of my sons sometime in the future. I am very happy to see the guitar from my father reborn. By the way, I won't tell you the name. Uh, his first name was Tom, um, but uh, he's from, uh, looks like King George, Virginia is where it looks, looks like it's from. VA, yeah, that is Virginia, I believe. Wow. Got our work cut out for us on this baby doll here. <laughs> this is going to be a, a neat project. I'm looking forward to making this thing like brand new again here. And I say like brand new. We're not going to change the looks that much. But I look forward to getting it up in real tip-top shape. The worst thing I see at this point, really, I mean, this is bad. Don't get me wrong. I think I have a fix for this, especially if I take the back apart. I think I got a good fix for this. Uh, the worst thing I see is how bad the neck is. And... Uh, we will see what we can do with that. I can't even guarantee I can fix that, but I think I can. Without doing a neck reset, I mean. Okay, here we go. One of the best things about bluegrass music is that we all get together every now and again and have a jam session. Just the other night at my house, my wife was at the front door and she was greeting him with hugs. And in the hall, I could hear a banjo. I think he was picking out some scrugs. In the corner was a dobro when he was polishing his bar, and through the front door window I could see a tiny car, and in that little foreign car was a big old doghouse bass, which only goes to prove we only need a little space. There's tuning keys and peg heads in every size and shape, with catgut on the fiddle and nylon on the bass. A mandolin against the wall tuning up to get it right, and the guitar player's strumming, I think he's set to pick all night. There's food out on the table, cold cuts, chips, and ham. Y'all pull your chairs up close, cause we're gonna have a bluegrass jam. <laughs> Thank you. 
We are free. Thank goodness that wasn't a real big tail block. That helped a lot. Came, came off with very little tear out. There's a little tear out on the, on the kerfing, but that's not that big a deal at all. That's pretty darn good. I'm really pretty happy with that. Now we can get down to the business of fixing this thing. Here's the part that broke out of up here, it looks like. This kerfing was inside and it looks like it broke out of up here. And we will put that back. That's the only kerfing I see that's completely broke out, so that's got to be where it came from. There's some other kerfing that's loose. We'll fix all that. The uh, never seen a bridge plate go all the way across the top like they did here. That is very unusual. All the way across the top. I wish I could just get that out of there because it's it's a soft wood number one. I would like to put in a bridge plate that would be more you know hardwood and span this whole area to to cover this hole because we need uh, we need a lot of support in this area to cover this hole at this point and then we'll fill the hole in now here's what I'm talking about on the on the on the neck if you you can maybe see that flex a little bit I put pressure on it and you can see that block flex in there maybe and uh, when we glue this top when we glue the back back on we'll put that under pressure and that'll get this neck flat to the top here yeah, as a matter of fact, when I pull it right there, it's almost perfect. So I think I can pull it. I, it doesn't take that much to pull it down. Just pull it down a quarter of an inch, and it's pretty flat. That will leave, don't get me wrong, that's going to leave a little bit of a hump right here. But, you know, like I said, we're talking about a cheater neck reset rather than doing a full neck reset. And uh, much cheaper. Much, much, much cheaper. Hundreds of dollars cheaper. So now we're on the road to putting it back correctly. Okay, we got a little bit of damage right here. It chipped up. Uh, looks much worse than it is. It's not a big deal at all. We just squirt some glue in here, good wood glue. We'll spread it all around with the brush. Okay, very good shape there now. Now all we got to do there is just put a good clamp on that. Let me wipe off the extra glue so the clamp won't stick to it. Holding a piece of leather under the top there where the bottom of the clamp is going. And uh, it's going to be mostly to take up space because I'm actually clamping on the fretboard for the most part. And now we'll put another clamp on there. This clamp is just going to be on the fretboard. So I'm not worried about that one. I can see glue squeezing out, so we're doing good. Okay, we'll just let that set and rest. And while that's resting, I will go ahead and glue in this kerfing that's missing here. As a matter of fact, the whole kerfing is broke loose right here, so we'll put all this back with some good glue. I'll make sure that there's any if there's any glue residue there, I'll clean that off first. So I'm just going to clean this glue out here, uh, just taking the back side of the X-Acto knife and uh, scraping it. I'm using it as a scraper along both surfaces to scrape off any extra caked on glue. There's not much glue there really. Okay, we'll glue this back in here. I'll just go ahead and put a little glue right on the joint. Now we'll clamp that up real good. That looks like that'll do that. So we got two repairs finished already. While those clamps are drying on the neck and that little kerfing spot, we can work on this. We can see that this is broken pretty badly most of the way across matter of fact it's so far I just popped it off that's I knew I was going to do that because uh, it was so bad there's no point in trying to salvage that little bit that was glued so we'll just take that all off now we can clean the surface really good 
and uh, we just scrape scrape that get that old glue off and uh, sometimes scraping works the best sometimes chiseling works the best um, you just have to see what works on your particular situation looks like a combination of chipping it off with the with the chisel and then scraping it smooth fits really well to the top this way so that's the way we're going so now we'll just do the same thing to this we just glue her in here Our love grew, the summer okie doke that should work pretty well now I've got to get some specialty clamps for this and get her all clamped up okay I'm holding this in the place where I want it and uh, I'm putting a piece of leather under here, taking a spring clamp and clamping the end first on that piece of leather. I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on this side. It's a pretty thick piece of leather, by the way, just so you know. And taking another spring clamp, clamping that end. That gives me time now because now it's pressed pretty good all the way across the back. And I believe these will be long enough. I'm going to put leather on this side of this clamp. You can see the glue squeeze out there from the clamp. And that's just number one. It's just like always, you can never really have too many clamps on this kind of thing. So we're going to put two more clamps for sure, and maybe more. Now I kneel by her graveside in the valley. Okay, that looks pretty good. But I'm still not satisfied. We're going to get some more clamps and reach in here and grab this. Okay, we're going to reach in with this little clamp and grab it right here on this peak. Got the leather under there holding it up against the top. That's much better. I can tell that needed that right there. That's what she looks like on the first brace. Got her all cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead and start gluing in the second brace. Okay, we're gonna scrape the crud off of this particular brace also. Doesn't have much on it though, so we're pretty good. All right, and now uh, I might just talk about order of operations. You, now you see why I cleaned that back off while I had it laying flat because now with the clamps on here I wouldn't be able to clean that off very good. I stand before you in this place without one hope or plea. My sin spread out before your face As you look down on me I have no merit on my own Very good job. That is better than it came from the factory, I can pretty much assure you. Don't believe those will ever come loose again.
It's day two. Now we can take all these braces off. You took upon your back a wooden cross. Seems solid now. I don't hear anything vibrating other than we got some cracks on the ends, I think. Uh, this big crack through here. It's not completely open, um, but uh, this there's a crack right here. It's not totally open, but we'll uh, we'll bend it a little bit, get a little water in there, and then we'll just work the glue into it with a suction cup or whatever, and we'll put put a clamp on that and that'll seal that crack up there. Me, there was indeed a ransom paid. My freedom has been won. The sacrifice was heaven's hey, this little specialty edge clamp is pretty handy for something like this. Got leather on both sides. I tighten it down real tight and then I can squeeze the whole crack together by pulling it across this way. This tightens the crack together. Very handy clamp. I'm going to put a piece of plastic here and put um, a little clamp across this too. Just to keep it flat. Calvary should work. We'll set that aside. Now we'll go ahead and take uh, these clamps off of the uh, bridge block, or the neck block, and that should be glued back like it never broke. And then we've got the kerfing glued back in there. Now there's a lot of other little places on the kerfing that need some TLC, like right here, and uh, I think over here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and glue those up and put the clothespins on them. I'm not going to bother to film that, but uh, that's what I'm doing. In order to do justice to this big mess right here, peekaboo, I <laughs> see. Uh, you know, there's almost no good way to fix something like this unless you go radical. And that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to tear out this whole brace that goes all the way across here because. Obviously, it wasn't very good or this whole thing wouldn't have broke out to begin with. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to put in a fairly traditional bridge plate in here out of hardwood. Uh, about a roughly an eighth inch thick. Roughly what the thickness of this is. But uh, we're going to span all of the broken area in here. And uh, then once we get that you know, clamped in place and, and you know, and, and done real well, then we'll be able to rebuild this top here down to that hardwood. And uh, I don't think we'll have any problem uh, making it stay then. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to start tearing this out and it ain't going to be easy because we're talking uh, tearing out a, you know, a piece of wood that's <clears throat> going cross grain to that soft top. So I have to be very careful that I don't break the soft top. Now the question is, how am I going to do that? And the answer is, I don't know. But I'm going to start with a chisel just to see what happens. Just lifting lightly to see if anything gives and nothing's giving. I can't pry, that's the problem. I can't pry against the top because if I do, I'm going to break the top. Okay, so... I don't see anything loose, unfortunately, and that's usually the way it goes when you got to do something like this. I'm trying to think what's the very fastest way to do it, and I don't really know if I know what the fastest way is. Here's a block plane. Uh, I can just plane it out of there. Well, it's slow, but it's working. You can see perhaps all the shavings in there. So it's working, but that's slow. I went to this smaller plane. I've got it very sharp. It's a lot easier to push. The smaller the plane, the easier it is to push. So in a lot of ways, uh, the smaller plane will remove wood faster just because of that. Um, 
I, actually, in just a couple of minutes, literally, I've got it almost down to the top. And uh, at least on this half, on this one side. I heard my mother sweetly singing As off she did so long ago She sang about the rock of ages Silver threads among the gold She told me once again of Jesus absolutely wonderful but it really you can't feel it I mean literally there's nothing there we're gonna cut a bridge plate that's gonna fit basically in this whole area here I'll have to get rid of some of this glue squeeze out and we're basically just gonna fill this whole section in right here and uh, with a, a thin bridge plate it's it's really not gonna be all that much bigger than a standard bridge plate just a little bigger uh, because we have to cover these holes and everything too. Okay, I was going to use maple as a uh, bridge plate, but I found this piece of mahogany. Mahogany is always a good choice for acoustic instruments. And I've already just rough cut it to fit in here, and it actually fits pretty close. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just take a little bit off of this corner to make it fit a little bit better. It's pretty much centered on the area that we need to cover, so I think we're in good shape there. It, it, I mean, it's perfectly good to go like it is. Now, it's too thick. I will thin it down quite a bit yet, but, uh, but uh, right now I'm just trying to get a rough fit in the hole here and make it fit the space. So I'll take a little bit off of this edge here to nothing, and it should fit real good. I decided against making it fit real tight in here, and the reason is because if it expands, it could push these braces apart. Uh, it could cause it to come loose. So I've got a, oh, I don't know, a little bit of play there. I might give it a little bit more play, actually. I think I'll give it about a total of an eighth inch play, and that'll be a sixteenth on each side, because it's. I'm afraid if I make it tight, that'll be a problem down the road. I've got this uh, piece of mahogany planed down to one hundred thousandths of an inch. I've got a little bit of airspace gap between the braces here, which is what I want. And I'm about ready to clamp her in place. Um, I think by going just a hundred thousandths, that's still real stiff, but yet it's not so uh, heavy that it's going to kill the sound. Um, and uh, I believe we're ready to glue her in there. And uh, I'm going to put some stiff boards on top and on the other side too. I'm, on both, I'm gonna sandwich it between some very stiff boards so that we can put a lot of clamping pressure on it and clamp it very flat. Okay, got a problem with the uh, top here then that there's a bunch of heavy thick glue on here. So I'm chiseling this off so that when I can put a heavy board on top of this and it'll clamp flat. But uh, I don't want that glue on there because that'll push it down more than it should. I've got a block of maple and I've beveled the corners and the edges of this maple and it's smooth so that it won't leave any impression on here if we do some heavy clamping on this. That'll, that'll flatten this top out because this top you can see the board is doing this. So the board, you know, the top is not level presently. This board is good and level. I, I put it on my uh, belt sander and, and leveled it out real good. So that 
that's why we need this heavy board here. Now, clamping this is not going to be simple because I don't know that I have clamps that can reach in and do this. We're going to have to figure that out. We may have to go through the sound hole with some of the clamps. And uh, I'll do a little dry run and bring you back when I get her figured out. Thank goodness I noticed this. A piece of this fancy inlay popped out right here. And I found it laying on my table. Oh my gosh, am I glad I found that. Because that would be a real pain to put back in here. Or, uh, you know, to recreate. So, I'm glad I saw that. I'm going to have to put a clamp on this because this top is raised up right here. Maybe I can get inside there and put some glue underneath. I can tell there's a problem under the kerfing here, so we're going to clean that out a little bit and put some glue in there too and clamp it all at the same time. Okay, I've got that little piece of inlay clamp back in there. Uh, and uh, this clamp uh, pushed the uh, top back down to the sides and we've got it glued on the inside there around the kerfing and it squeezed out in there so I cleaned all that up. It's good to set here. I'm going to let it set for about an hour or so. I'm going to take a lunch break and we'll get back and fix this top. Okay, I believe the inlays had plenty of time to dry and uh, looks good now. Can't even tell it was, fell out of there. And uh, now we'll turn our attention back to the inside of the guitar and we'll get this all glued up in place. Okay. Now let's see if we can figure out a way to clamp this. This is going to be the hard part here. And I don't know that these clamps are going to reach in far enough. I didn't think so. So I'm going to have to devise something here pretty quickly. may have to put it in a vise and just put some blocks of wood in here to make it clamp. That's probably what I'll do. It's all about the clamping. I don't know if you can make out what's going on here or not. This piece of steel across here is my vise. I have blocks built up in here that are sitting on top of this, these other pads. And the, the jaws on the outside are hooked on to that big block of wood I have on the, out, on the top, on the other side of the... I can't really explain it any better than that. I could, the problem is this camera doesn't disconnect from the mount. So anyway, I can't take the camera around to the other side. But suffice it to say, the other side of the jaw is mashing against the other piece of wood that's on the top. And so I've got it clamped really tight across there. Uh, because that big board is so thick, uh, this is very flat now. So the boards are uh, really flat. The only place I might, if I could get another clamp in here, I would like it, but I think I'm good. Um, I can see a little bit of squeeze out all the way along the edge here. I don't really see much squeeze out on this side, but I don't think that's a problem. I just think I don't have a lot of glue on there, and that's, that's okay. I'm tightening this down a little bit to see if I see any more squeeze out on this side, but I believe we're good. I really do. I've got, I've got quite a bit of vice pressure on there. It is really clamped tight. And uh, just looking across the top of the guitar, it looks absolutely, completely flat. So that's all you need that's all you can do right there let's back up just a little bit so you get a little bit more of a view of what the whole thing looks like and that's what it is so it's all about creative clamping that's what it's all about if you can get the glue on it and get the clamping on it uh, it will hold as long as the joints clean of course
Just for the record, here's what it looks like from the other side. You can see that the vise jaws are on the bottom of this board right here. And uh, from the edge there, you can see maybe how it's holding it there. And the top looks completely flat. I mean, it looks absolutely perfectly flat. And that's what we're going for. So, again, there you go. It's all about clamping. Ask and ye shall receive. Lucky Larry from Nevada came through for me with some deer antler. Very nice. It's wonderful. A lot of small sheds. Uh, you know, this one here might be hard to get a straight ant or a straight uh, saddle out of that one, but uh, you know, most of these are straight enough that I think I can do it. I think uh, it's all in how you cut them and stuff. And like that one's an easy one there. It's a real good one. These little, these small ones are actually some of the better antlers for making saddles if they're not too curved, you know. But uh, he sent a whole passel of them. He said, I think he's. His note said there's 11 of them. Well, Larry, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. I, that came at a perfect time because I was starting to run low. I, I still have enough to keep me going, but I, it's very good to have the stock replenished. <laughs> uh, Larry's note says, uh, Hello, Jerry. Hope these antlers are usable for you to make saddles. I'm pretty sure you could get a few saddles out of these, 11 sheds, uh, depending on how you cut them. Really enjoy your videos. Always interesting and entertaining. Thank you, Larry. And he says he does a little bit of everything on his videos. He's got videos out there on YouTube. And I'll uh, find his uh, channel and uh, put a link to it in the description. So be sure to look for that. He does a little bit of everything. He says from repairing and rebuilding uh, collect old collectibles to guns and old radios and even restoring old car parts, it says. So, uh, Larry, once again, thank you very much. And... Uh, you folks out there, if you've got deer antler like this and you're if just laying around in the way, well, I appreciate it very much if you'd send them to me. Thank you very, very kindly. It's been a full 24 hours, so we're going to take this out of the vise now and see what we ended up with. Get rid of these blocks of wood. And now it's just a matter of taking off these clamps. And let's see if the top is good and flat like I'm hoping. Oh, that is absolutely perfectly flat. There's no belly in it at all now. It's perfect. I really couldn't be happier with how that worked. It's just perfect. Okay, so now we'll get our little router and we'll just route out all this area here that's damaged and then we'll put a new inlay in there and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to be good to go. All right, before I route this, I'm going to take a uh, straight edge here and uh, And I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and cut across here to give me a good straight line. There are people who would rather live in mansions, people who would rather live alone. People who would trade God's promise for the glories to hold. There are people who would rather live in splendor and brag about their silver and their gold. But I'd rather have a little old cabin by the side of the road. I'd rather live by the side of the road And try to point souls to their blessed abode Than to be a king or a millionaire And live in mansions in bright rain I'd rather do a neighborly deed For a traveler here friend indeed. I'd rather live by the side of the road than help some pills. 64 millimeters. 22 by 64. And uh, I will go cut a piece of wood, spruce, to fit this and we'll be back. Alright, I think you can see that we have a nice block of spruce in there. Uh, fill in that void. 
and it fits in really good and tight. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sharpen up this pencil and I'm just going to mark a line all the way around it and then I'm just going to take it through my thickness sander and get it pretty close to the line. I'll probably leave the line but that'll be close enough for now. We're ready to put this puppy in place. It's uh, it's really nice fit too. It fits in there just tight as it can fit in there. I won't be able to get it back out after I put it in this time because uh, I had trouble getting it out with the chisel the last time and there was something to grab a hold of. This time there won't be anything to grab a hold of. Every day I wanna help scatter roses. Every night I want my lamp to shine abroad. With a welcome from a little bay window by the side of the road. I'd rather live by the side of the road and try to point souls to their blessed abode than to be a king or a millionaire. Do we have it clamped up well? I'll just show you the inside so you can see there's a block of wood in there and there's a, a you know, this is a piece of sycamore so it's not very big but it's pretty stiff and I've got two clamps one at each end of the patch pushing down uh, on that hardwood there and, uh, and then I've got plastic in there in case it leaks out but uh, I think we're in very good shape I couldn't be happier with the way this has turned out this would be by calendar day four of the uh, Regal top restoration or really it's guitar restoration because all the braces are loose and everything too so and the binding and we're taking them back off so this is and the neck angle <laughs> so there's a lot going on here but uh it's kind of an order of operations again you just kind of keep working until you move to the next thing okay that's what it looks like i just took the clamps off as i was talking to you there and that's what that looks like. It's almost perfectly flat, but you can feel it just a tiny bit, which is good. That's what I would want. I, I'm glad it's just slightly proud of the surface. And I'm talking probably a 32nd of an inch, something like that. So we'll take that down to match the rest here before long. Let's just take one more look at the inside so you can see what the inside looks like. So now we have a very solid top. Uh, not afraid at all that it's gonna break and uh, still seems very resonant. You probably can't hear that on there, but I can hear it vibrate and, and hear the wood actually make a tone. So uh, I don't think we've hurt the acoustics of it much. Uh, sure, it's gonna change the acoustics a little bit, but you know, what are you gonna do? You gotta do something to make it right. And uh, you can't monkey around at this point. This thing's been monkeyed with too many times. So, we're getting pretty good. Now I'm going to do a detailed inspection of the braces inside. I'm really going to kind of crank on them a little bit to make sure that they're solid and that they're not going to pop loose later after we put it back together. And uh, I did that on the back thinking that those other two braces were good on the back. Well this morning I got a little more anxious, rambunctious with my uh, cranking <laughs> and I actually did notice that they were loose on the ends. I didn't notice it before but they were loose on the ends about two inches on this one end and uh, anyway when I started wiggling that they just popped right off really easy they didn't break nothing broke it just popped off so I'm glad that I'm glad that happened now I can clean these things off and we'll clamp those braces back on just like I clamped these braces on I'm not going to show it because it's exactly the same process but uh, anyway I'm glad those came off now and that I can fix them now just show you another technique I've got a scraper here I scraped the two areas where the braces went and then it just you know the whole top here was for lack of a better term pretty craptacular so it was really dirty had a lot of glue squeeze out it had uh, overspray from through the sound hole and you know plus this neck area up here was you know kind of cruddy so I just took a scraper and just scraped the whole area and cleaned it up to one so it all looks the same and uh, anyway and I'm only cleaning it up on this this side of the brace you really won't be able to see back in there anyway and this will clean up this uh, neck joint area really good too so that uh, you know get all the glue off of it it'll be good fresh surface to glue to
And for the curious out there, that's what it looks like with those front two braces glued up. Like I said, I didn't film the process, but uh, that's all there is to it. And I've cleaned the glue squeeze out. It looks really good. They're both really tight. That way, this whole back is going to be absolutely rock solid. We won't have to worry about the back. Before we can start thinking about putting a new bridge on here, we've got to get this perfectly level. And uh, I'm going to do that with my little tiny finger planes. And this, you could make a big mess out of this if you're not careful, but uh, I've been doing this for a lot of years and, and I'm used to using these finger planes and I carve all my instruments with them. So I feel like my skill level with these finger planes is, you know, pretty darn high. And uh, so I don't feel like I'm in danger of scalping the guitar with this. Although it could happen. That's just about as good as it needs to be. Well, I think that's going to do it for part one of restoring this Regal guitar. I hope you'll watch part two because in part two, we're going to put the back back on the guitar. We're going to make a new bridge. We're going to create all that new binding and put the new binding and fix the binding on the top. And we're going to do what I call a cheater's neck reset. Some of you won't like that. I can already tell you that's okay if you don't like it. Too bad, so sad. But uh, it will show you a way that we can set this neck back at the right angle and save the customer a ton of money, and nobody's really going to be able to tell it anyway. Hope you'll watch that. Yeah, yeah.